Hello, it's Shannon Magic Myers. Today we'll be continuing our exploration of math medical induction. And so let's go ahead and get started. This section continues exploring mathematical induction. We will be using mathematical induction to prove properties about divisibility and to prove inequalities. So really there's no, there's just in the textbook, they just have like one official theorem and then the other ones are just proving uh, different properties. Um, so what I thought I would do is feel free to read the text for those. I decided to do other ones that were not um, in there to give you more examples. All right, so first off, we've got seven to the n minus one is divisible by six for each integer n greater than or equal to zero. So what do we always start with? Very good, proof. <laughs> And then uh, to do this, what do we need? Well, we need to identify everything, right? So we're gonna let in, I'm just gonna say be a non-negative integer. So that's equivalent to n being greater than or equal to zero and n being an integer. And we're gonna let P it in be the property seven to the N minus one is divisible by six. So this is um, a little bit different than what we were doing last time. Last time we had like a left side and a right side of an equation to work with. This time it's this property that this expression is divisible by six. Okay, so um, basis step. So for our basis step, what do we need to do? We need to check our P at zero and we need to see if it is true, okay? So when we take a look at this property evaluated at zero, we'd be plugging in a zero wherever we see an N. And this is equal, seven to the zero is one, right? and then this is equal to zero, right? Okay, so what does it mean to be divisible by six, right? Well, it means that that, that number needs to be a multiple of six, right? So zero is equal to six times zero, right? So, six divides zero. So that checks out. Our basis step is true. So now we get to move on to our inductive step. Aren't you excited? <laughs> All right, so our inductive step. So we need to bring our dummy variable into play. So we might as well let K be a non-negative integer. And we'll let P at K be the property seven to the K minus one is divisible by six.
Let's also note that seven to the K minus one is divisible by six. If there exists some R that belongs to the integers such that seven to the K minus one is equal to six times R. All right, so that's sort of our evil plan and that's by definition. All right, so let's check out what we have going on. So P at K plus one is equal to seven raised to the K plus one minus one. Good so far? All right, so how could we rewrite seven to the K plus one? Beautiful, that's equivalent to seven to the one, right? Times seven to the K using properties of exponents. And then what do we still have left? We still have our minus one. Now, we're, the whole you know, plan here is to show that this expression is divisible by six, correct? We have no sixes in here. So how could we create a situation where we have a six? Awesome. Isn't seven equivalent to six plus one? And then we have the other seven raised to the K and we still have minus one. So all I did here is in for that first factor of seven, I expanded that to the sum six plus one. Cool, cool. So now I can distribute that and I'll get six times seven to the K and then what? Beautiful. Well, this is equal to six times seven raised to the K plus one times seven raised to the K and then subtracted by one. I just distributed the seven to the K through this quantity. Now, but what do I have here? I have six times seven to the K and I can use grouping right here just to kind of make it even more clear don't I have this seven to the K minus one? But what is seven to the K minus one? What did we do over here? Seven to the K minus one, we said there was some R, right? That belonged to the integers. That was equal to that, right? Where seven to the K minus one was equal to six times R rather. So this would end up being six times seven to the K plus six times R, which in turn is six times seven to the K plus R. Cool so far? Beautiful. What do we know about seven to the K plus R? K is an integer, correct? R is an integer. And K, furthermore, is an integer greater than or equal to zero, right? So therefore, seven raised to the K plus R belongs to the integers. And that's by what property? Or by, by closure properties, right? Two different closure properties. So we've shown it, thus seven to the K plus one minus one is divisible by six. And we're all done. Cool, cool? All right. So next up, what do we have going on? We have, ooh, a factorial, fun, fun, fun. So let's check it out. We have, oh, I'm very sorry, we have a typo, first of all. 
because I thought I had the most recent one. Let's change change this here to n plus 2 factorial. Cool, cool? All right, so now let's see what we have. We need to, um, of course, start out with proof. And then what do we do? And in fact, you can go ahead and try this on your own if you want to and then check to see how you did. So I'm going to let n be a non-negative integer again. And I'm going to let P at N be the property or the inequality, I guess. Two to the N is less than quantity N plus two factorial. Cool, cool. All right, so now our basis step, we're starting at n equal to zero. So our basis step would be to verify that that is true. Okay, so let's check. 2 to the 0 less than 0 plus 2 factorial. Well, 2 to the 0 is 1, and 1 is indeed less than 2 factorial, which is equal to 2. So that checks out. All righty, so now the inductive step. So for our inductive step, you know, it's kind of similar to that very first uh, statement, but except we use k. So let k be a non-negative integer. And we'll let p at k be the inequality two to the K is less than quantity K plus two factorial. Cool, cool? All right, so here we go. We need to figure out, you know, what the oh, what these things look like, right? <laughs> So let's let's just check out what what it looks like when we put in k plus one in for our k's. So we'll have two to the k plus one is less than k plus one plus two factorial. Good so far. So here we go. If we take a look at, you know, using properties of exponents, are you okay with the fact that two to the K plus one can be rewritten as two to the one times two to the K? And then cleaning up the right-hand side of the inequality, this'll be K plus three factorial. Okay, so over here we have k plus 2 factorial. So let's rewrite the k plus 3 factorial where we will have within it a k plus 2 factorial. And that'll get us on the road. So remember that k plus 3 factorial is equivalent to k plus 3, that quantity, times quantity k plus 2 factorial. So this here is equivalent to this. All right, so now let's compare 
We know that 2 to the k is less than k plus 2 factorial. We checked our basis step, right? What we really are going to need to show is we're going to need to think about how would 2 and the quantity k plus 3 compare, right? So we're, we're, we want to compare we want to compare these guys to the factor 2 and the factor k plus 3. All right, so 2 is less than k plus 3 since k is greater than or equal to 0. Good with that? So if k was 0, 0 plus 3 is 3, all right? So we'll have Two to the k plus one, that was the left side of the inequality, is equal to two times two to the k. We know for sure that this is less than two times k plus two factorial, right? But we know that two times k plus 2 factorial is less than k plus 3 times k plus 2 factorial, which we said was k plus 3 factorial. Good so far? I know it's kind of a mouthful. All right. So what does that leave us with? What was k plus 3 factorial? And this is by transitivity, all right, uh, for inequalities. So what does that leave us with? That leaves us with the fact that 2 raised to the k plus 1 will be less than, what was k plus 3 factorial? Beautiful. It was k plus 1 and then plus 2 in factorial, remember? So, it works out. We've shown what we needed to show. Groovy? All right. So, next up, we have um, this next example. As each of a group of business people arrives at a meeting, each shakes hands with all the other people present. So we want to show using mathematical induction that if n people come to the meeting, then n times n minus 1 divided by 2 handshakes occur. All right. This again um, is a problem I've seen on a GRE uh, exam. Uh, that's a graduate record exam. So um, you might want to kind of stick some of these things in your mind. They're popular questions. All right, so here we go. Let's let's start with, you know, we'll just go ahead and do it as a an official proof. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, let we're talking about people, right? So people can't be negative, and um, the minimum number of people that would equate to one sh one handshake would be two. Good so far? So let's uh, let, we're gonna let P at N be the property if N people come to the meeting and each shakes hands with all others present.
then n times n minus 1 over 2 handshakes occur. Cool, cool. All right, so um, our inductive step, um, we'll just say note n must be greater than or equal to 2 um, for a handshake to occur, <laughs> unless you're shaking hands with yourself, right? All right, so our inductive step, or sorry, our basis step will be to check P at awesome two. Okay, so far? All right, so when we check P at two, what happens? Well, P at two means that two people come, right? So if two people meet and shake hands, one handshake occurs, right? So that's the first one. Now let's check it in the formula in N. So P at two would be two times two minus one over two, which is one. So that checks out. Groovy? All right. So next up we have our inductive step. So for our inductive step, we need to imagine if, you know, K plus one people come. So unfortunately, <laughs> we have to rewrite that whole statement again um, that we started with, but now in, we're doing it in terms of P at K. So let P at K be the property. If K people come to the meeting, and each shakes hands, with all others present, Then K times K minus one over two handshakes occur. And then for the same reason, K must be greater than or equal to two. All right, so now let's see what we need to do. We, of course, need to check P at K plus one. So let's check it out. I'm going to first work with the, um, the formula in terms of K. All right. So P at K plus one would be K plus one times quantity k plus 1 minus 1 all over 2. Good so far? All right, and so now what's going to happen? This is equivalent to k plus 1 times k, right? Because the 1 zero out over 2.
And then um, if you want, you could rewrite this as k times k plus 1 over 2. All right, so that's the first portion. All right, so now we have to think about this um, when the people arrive, okay? So imagine that you're going into a room with a meeting and there, and you make the fourth person, okay? So the K plus first person is four. So how many people are, less, are left? Good, it's gonna be K plus one minus one or K people left, right? So when the K plus first person arrives, they'll be shaking hands with K people, right? Or persons. Well, you're gonna know for sure, you know, that K handshakes will occur in that case because you're the one shaking their hands and there's K people in there. So K handshakes will occur. Good so far? All right, well, what do we know about P at K, right? P at K is perfect. K times K minus one over two. And then that's the number. So this is the number of, of handshakes that occurred previously. And then we're adding K more handshakes. Cool, cool. So in order to add those, we need to get a common denominator. So a common denominator of two will give us, I'm gonna also distribute this here, k squared minus k plus two k all over two. All right, well this is going to equal to k squared plus k over two, which lo and behold is k times k plus one over two, which matches. So remember, we wanted to match this one here, right? And it does. All right, so we have shown what needed to be shown and we're done. <laughs> okay, so the next one is pretty cool. We talked about, um, dominoes last time a little bit uh, just to visualize what's going on with mathematical induction. So here, let's take a look at uh, this theorem. It's pretty cool. It's called, uh, it's a theorem about covering a board with trominoes. So for any integer n greater than or equal to one, if one square is removed from a 2 to the n by 2 to the n checkerboard. The remaining squares can be completely covered by L-shaped trominoes. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at the proof for this. If we let P at n be the property If any square is removed from a two to the n by two to the n checkerboard, then the remaining squares
can be completely covered by L-shaped traumas. Okay, so the, you know, the smallest um, checkerboard that you can have would be for n equal to one, right, for this case. So that would be a two by two checkerboard, right? So, you know, we'll just say note n has to be greater than or equal to one for this and, of course, an, a, an integer. All right, so let's do our basis step and we'll just, we'll kind of make a picture as well to illustrate it. So for our basis step, what would be happening? You would have a board that was what? Well, you, it would be a two by two board, right? So, oops. That would be roughly what it would look like. Um, and then you can take taking out any square, right? Any square. So the, the, well, the sh black shaded square represents the square that's been taken out. And as you see, you know, this, it can be covered by a, a tromino. I don't know what color trominos are, but it can be covered by an L-shaped tromino. Cool so far? Okay. So that's our, that's our, our basis, our basis step. So we're going to say, um, so P at one is true by our illustration. And so, sorry, what we did was we checked P at one. All right. So now on to our inductive step. So for our inductive step, uh, we need to take a look at the idea that, hey, we've got K, a two to the K by two to the K checkerboard now, and then we have to check P at K plus one. So um, again, this is probably the longest part of the, <laughs> of the proof is to copy this all back down. So we're gonna let, I'm not gonna talk during it so I can speed up the, the tape, so. Here we go. So what we're going to want to do is check P at K plus one. All right. So to do that, all right, let's scope it out. Checking P at K plus one is we got to think about the situation where um, we have a two to the K plus one by two to the K plus one board, all right? But we've talked about this using properties of exponents. I mean, isn't each of those going to be equal to two times two to the K and then by two times two to the K. And remember that, you know, I mean, what does this mean? And this is kind of a, a little bit of a trick, but if you think about uh, multiplication, 
multiplication as being repeated addition. If you're adding, if you're multiplying two to the K by two, aren't you adding two to the K to itself twice? All right. So here, this would be two to the K plus two to the K by, and the same over here, two to the K plus two to the K. So again, I mean, just in case you're uh, curious about that, think about this. If you have two times four, right? Well, we know that that is equal to eight, right? But think about this. If you add four plus four, isn't that also equal to eight? And so basically these guys by, these are equivalent. repeated addition by using repeated addition. Okay, so coming back, let's see what we have. So now, all right, if we multiply these, you know, so basically I'm going to have two to the K, so two to the K by two to the K, right? And then plus two to the K by two to the K. And then doing these here, I'll have plus two to the K by two to the K. And then the last plus two to the K by two to the K. So what does that mean? That means that you can make quadrants out of any board, any two to the K by two to the two to the K plus one by two to the K plus one board. You can make these these two to the K by two to the K quadrants, right? So here, what's gonna happen is you'll have a board again. Right, and so here, if we do this here, oops, what we have really is each of these guys is two to the K, two to the K, which gives us, of course, two to the K plus one, right? And basically, if you remove any one, a square from any any one of these, right? Um, so you would have to, remember, you're just removing a single um, square from this board, right? So basically, what would happen is this, uh, I don't know, let's say we removed a square from over here, right? It turns out that that you can you can work the traumas where you'll have one tromino that in an L shape that will be able to be in this center part anywhere anywhere that you take one out from the board. Cool, cool, right? 
And then each of these squares here, right? Is a two to the K by two to the K. So it's actually really uh, kind of a cool thing, right? All right, so anyway, um, that, that because this here, you know, we've checked at the basis step, right, um, that it's true, right? And our job, and, and so these are, you know, the two to the Ks we can assume, right, to be true. And so, um, so these are all true. So anyway, that, that wraps it up. I mean, even though we're only removing, you know, one little piece, um, since all of these are, are assumed to be uh, true, right? It turns out that, you know, we can um, spread the traumanos in such a way where it'll have where the gray shading is, we'll have this, this traumano and then, um, that will be on the boards where the nothing was removed. All right. Cool, cool. All right. So a little bit of trivia for you there. And um, so we've shown what needs to be shown. So we're all done. So I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you're watching this show. And please uh, subscribe if you like what I'm doing. Bye. Bye.